Hey guys, I'm Jay, and today we're looking at a damn handsome Benchmade Casbah model number 4400. As usual, let's get started with the features, then we will compare this to some other knives on the table. Now, make sure you stick around until the end so you can see the full specs on this. And if you're a subscriber, you might even see your name at the end in the credits. Now, I know that you guys are busy. I just want to quickly remind you, click on that subscribe button if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. The Benchmade Casba is a auto action plunge lock with a secondary safety, operates just like a switch, that enables you to lock the blade in either the open or closed positions. I personally feel that every automatic knife should have this kind of a safety on it. But just my opinion. The blade is riding on some bronze washers. Deployment, as you can see, is accomplished with this push button. Now the length of the blade is 3.40 inches and a thickness at 2.85 millimeters of CPM S30V. That's right, you heard me right. This is an automatic knife that does not have 154 CM blade steel. Hallelujah, right? The handle is 4.40 inches long, giving this an excellent blade to handle ratio. The thickness, a little over half inch at 0.59. And now the closed width, so how much room this is gonna occupy in your pocket is only 1.23 inches. How about we go ahead and get a weight on this? 3.4 ounces, 3.5 ounces, 3.4 ounces. That's gonna be, wow, exactly, almost exactly, one, two, three, four, the equivalent of four AA batteries. Now, if for some reason that you're not crazy about this version of the Caspa, that's okay because Benchmade has you covered. You can actually find this in, well, of course, the satin or uh, black DLC finished blade, plain edge or combo, which is half serrated, blue or black grivery scales. Now. You might be thinking, Jay, this knife looks really, really familiar. I know I've seen it somewhere else. Yes, that's because this knife was actually, do you remember when uh, Benchmade had that licensing agreement with H&K? This knife was an H&K and it was known as the Patrol. Now. Benchmade held on to this design and re-released it, and it's almost identical to the Patrol, with the exception of the blade steel, which of course, this is S30V, and the Patrol was D2. Why don't we go ahead and bring in some, uh, some other knives, just for comparison's sake. So, of course, I have to bring out the Kershaw Launch One automatic without a safety. Needless to say, I do not carry this very often, as often as I should. Uh, let's bring out the Boker Kalishnikov. And how about, what other one do I got for you? Oh yeah. Another Benchmade, the Doug Ritter Griptilian, 
and let's do one more. How about the Spyderco Native 5? Why don't we go ahead and quickly run through my seven likes and dislikes of the Benchmade Casbah. Let's start with number one, the curb appeal, appearance, aesthetics, how it looks. I really like, I love this blocky, compact appearance. Now, the blade is flat ground, and of course, plain edge here, with a really nice uh, satin finish which actually the blade, well, and the overall design, this kind of reminds me of the bug out. Like if the bug out was larger and was automatic, this is what it would look like. Maybe, hmm? I don't know. Number two, the materials. I like the materials. CPM S30B, good to go. Grivery scales. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, it's more or less just like fancy plastic. Very, very durable fancy plastic, but nonetheless. And at the pivot, we already talked about the low maintenance bronze washers. Now, when I squeeze on the scales, there is absolutely no flex with the grivery handle. If we look inside, I don't know if you guys will be able to see this, but there are actual partial liners on the inside, on both sides. Uh, kind of like the Benchmade Freak, just like that. Number three, the function. Well, I gotta tell you, the action is friggin' awesome sauce. It really is. Look at that. It's like you blink, you miss it. Bam! I mean, it is just, the deployment is fast and hard hitting. Let's check out the centering, which, very, very nice. Perfectly centered. Now, I know sometimes with automatic knives, you know, there's a compromise. You're getting that ease of deployment, the, the, the speed of deployment, but sometimes you're giving up durability as far as the blade and, well, play in it. This, up, down, left, right, no play whatsoever, not even the tiniest tick. Very solid. Now the Casbah is, is, let's call it somewhat fidget friendly. Unfortunately, it requires two hands to close this. I mean, I think I can do it one-handed. Let me try. Okay, well, nope, unable to do it. The two-handed deployment, unfortunately, just makes this a little less fidget friendly. I mean, it's still a good time, you know, to sit here and do this, but it's two-handed deployment, so. Uh, the safety lock right here has got to be like the sturdiest, robust, safety that I have ever laid my hands on. I mean, it's just got that, listen, nice authoritative click. I tap on it with my thumb. It does not move whatsoever. So there's no rattling that's caused by the, uh, the switch. Oop, let's take that safety off. There we go. Number four, in the hand, I like. The scales, slightly contoured, some chamfering all the way around. Let me see if I can get you guys to see that a little bit. A 
little bit, not completely flat. And did you notice this, uh, the, this texture? It does appear on both sides of the handle and it just provides some excellent grip. I mean, your hand will not slide forward. Now, this could potentially chew up your pocket, but I don't know, I guess that's the, uh, that's the compromise there. There is just a little bit of jimping, uh, three areas to be exact. Right here on the underside, the choil, and on the spine of the handle, right by the pivot, and one other place, right here at the butt end. So that would kind of rest in your palm and just makes for more of a, you know, secure grip. The balance is surprisingly good. Look at that. Now I say surprisingly because this handle is extremely lightweight. I thought for sure that this thing would be blade heavy. And as you can see, it is not. I mean, it's balancing exactly where it should be. There is a very pronounced, if you guys can see that, sharpening choil. Now, there is one area I just want to draw your attention to. The inside edges, some of you might consider that kind of sharp. Let's see if you can hear this. Listen. It's like my thumb is kind of catching on that inside edge. Yeah, they, I really would have liked to have seen these kind of rounded out, but eh, whatever. Number five, in the pocket. Let's first go ahead and look at the clip. Uh, not a fan, not a fan. I, I really don't like the lettering here. I mean, why not just use this? What's wrong with the standard uh, butterfly clip? Oh no, they had to try and get fancy. It's actually a pretty, pretty long clip as well. And now it is deep carry. However, not deep enough. And I see why it's like this, and that's to accommodate the lanyard hole, which is unfortunate. The closed width, 1.23 inches, that's great. Handle thickness of 0.59, that's not too bad, but it is dangerously close to griptilian thickness. And you guys know, I mean, the griptilian is well, notoriously uh, chubby. I'll show you. Mm -hmm. Let's get one more shot just so you guys can see how they compare to each other. Is that good? Yeah. Not quite as thick as the griptilian, but again, it's close. It really is close. Not a deal breaker. The pocket clip, oh, you know what? I forgot to mention the pocket clip is uh, strictly tip up only, and that's gonna be for righties and for lefties alike. Number six, the weight I like. What did we say, 3.5 ounces? That is just fantastic for a knife of this size. Almost an overall length of eight inches. 3.5, 3, no, 3.4 ounces. I mean, especially when you compare this to other Benchmade automatics, which can be ridiculously heavy. So it's nice to see 
that the Casbah is super light. And finally, number seven, the price. I actually like the price. $148, which now that isn't bad considering Benchmade is notorious for their high prices. I thought for sure this thing would be like, what, $191. No, $148. Thank you, Benchmade. Let's quickly uh, summarize. We said uh, curb appeal, like materials, like function, like in the hand, like weight, no, excuse me, in the pocket, like weight and price, like that's going to be, wow, seven to zero. So for those of you keeping score at home, that makes this a home run. I highly recommend the Benchmade Casbah. Just get it. Because you will be receiving in return good blade steel, fast and very strong deployment, lightweight, damn handsome blade, and a robust safety lock. And on top of all that, there's no blade play. None in any direction. I love this knife. I really do. This actually has earned a spot in my top five favorite knives. I like this that much. Before we go, I would like to leave you guys with a question and I would like to know what is your favorite automatic? Your absolute favorite automatic knife? Leave your answers in the comment section below. Look forward to reading and responding to you. So I want to thank you guys for stopping by. Don't go anywhere. I'm going to show you the specs here in just a second. Thanks again, you guys. And if this video answered most of your questions about the Benchmade Casbar, just go ahead and leave a like, would you please? Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, thanks again, and I will see you at the next video. Take care, okay?